Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. While the unemployment rate appears low, there are really not that many good jobs for folks who aren't superstars. And so self-employment, which has long been appealing, uh, may hold additional appeal these days. I thought I would share with you my thoughts about how to start a business, but rather than teach you in the abstract, I'm going to take a very specific example, one that is among the more popular dreams of many would-be self-employed people, and that is opening a cafe. Of course, there is a cafe on nearly every block in most desirable areas, so um, I'm going to try to talk about how you can differentiate yourself and succeed even in a very crowded market. Now, first of all, this is my fantasy part. I uh, I think the life in the big city is getting ever more difficult. The traffic, the schools, the crime, uh, and yes, the um, the pervasiveness of places like cafes. So I start by thinking about where do I want to live? And I probably want to live in a peaceful small town that had a lot of fairly intelligent people, maybe a, a small college town, one that isn't overrun by cafes, or maybe one that had a cafe or cafes that were doing very poorly but in a great location, and that enables me to uh, either buy or lease the space inexpensively and get the equipment, which can cost a fortune, at a low cost. Um, I would, the very first thing I would do after just having that general idea is I'd want to, of course, educate myself first. And my education would consist of a number of low-cost, low-risk low activities. I would visit some successful cafes, especially so for if I wanted to be right near a college, I would look at successful cafes that are near a college, look at their menu, look at the order flow, what the logistics are, what each person does, pricing, lighting, ambiance, everything I could, I would go to three or four places that were successful and, look, and try to incorporate the very best of their ideas into mine. I would simply Google or chat GPT uh, terms like opening a cafe and seeing what I could learn. That could me, give me great generic advice, but when I read a few articles and I found one that the person who wrote it really seems expert, I'd probably hire that person on a one-time basis as a consultant so that instead of the generic advice, I'm getting advice that's going to be custom to me. Now that's going to make me fairly knowledgeable up front. Now, um, a little more about location. You know, I, I um, we have to look at things not just where I want to live and not just, and I'm not worried about there being other cafes unless they're just amazing cafes, in which, but if there are a couple of not so great cafes, I'm going to make mine great. And in fact, there's a term called plottage, which means people think of a certain location as having cafes. And so you benefit by having other cafes around. That's why you see a McDonald's near a Burger King near a Taco Bell. Uh, because people think of that area as where the fast food is. So I'd look for a place that might have um, more than one cafe there, just not wonderful ones. Of course, I want to have a location. I will not compromise on location. There has to be a lot of foot traffic. It has to be very visible whether you're from driving or walking. Very important. I mean, you know, if you're off on a side street, you can put all the sandwich boards, you know, on the main street or post to make a right turn here. That's usually too big a, uh, a, a liability to have to counter. Um, now, looking at for a specific location, of course, as I said earlier, what is really, I, ideally, I want a place that is, and it may not have to be for, for sale or for rent right away. If there's a struggling cafe, that's what I love. If it's got the equipment, but it's a great location, but it's just run poorly. It's dirty, it's not light, the, the food isn't good, the coffee isn't that great, the, the staff is, is rude, um, any of that stuff. But the location is great. That is the kind of place I'm going to want to either buy or negotiate for. I'll have a lot of good negotiating potential, and usually you can get the equipment, and there's a lot of equipment. There's, you know, there's the displays, and there's the ovens, and there's the, the counters, and very important. I also want to consider zoning. Different areas are, um, I wouldn't say it's zoning, actually more uh, regulation. Different locales have more and less regulation, and regulations can, government regulation can kill you or make life relatively easy. I consider that in choosing my location. I also, when I'm negotiating the lease, I don't want to take all the risk myself. So I would try to see if I could get the owner to carry back some of the financing and say, give me free rent for six months and then if I'm still alive, I'll pay you this fairly good 
rent or give me an interest free loan or I want to try to get it to come from that from the seller who is often if that place is not doing very well may be very motivated to give me a good deal um, if I need additional money and I don't have it myself probably the first thing I would do is get a couple of zero interest credit cards and max those out and use that money that's zero interest loans that's great and if that wasn't enough I'd go to friends and family perhaps although that of course is risky um, but you're gonna see the way I'm every step of the way I'm doing things not cheap but smart so that getting that location with the right equipment at the right price is most important thing then when it comes time to remodel it I'm going to use paint it's cheap to you know if I want to make it very bright I would just use the right bright colored paints and again I would copy the ideas from the most successful um, uh, cafes if let's say it's an industrial one and there's all these big ugly pipes I would either try to hide them by just painting it white or I try to use them as a plus and paint them in really cool colors I would use mainly artificial plants because they don't need maintenance and they're really quite expensive inexpensive but I probably would have fresh flowers on each table because it's cheap you go to a Trader Joe's or whatever you can get a whole big bunch for 10 bucks that's enough for 10 different tables and it feels very non-artificial that's the kind of cost-effective stuff I would probably do um, furniture I want I'd probably you know if I'm really trying to be efficient I'm gonna use hard chairs to get people out of there but that's not quite it's not all about the money so I'd probably get some very at least a mix of some very comfortable chairs that I could get either out of you know students who are selling their stuff or flea markets or um, uh, Craigslist or whatever used is fine um, I want it to look and feel fairly homey that's pretty important and yet have enough hard chairs so that the tables turn you know a reasonable number of tables turn but I want it to feel like a place where people want to stay um, I want to think about my role do I want to be a manager do I want to just be the guy behind the scenes uh, I'm a pianist so I probably would I certainly would have events because events can be very attractive to customers and yet not um, cost me a lot so I would probably play a little background piano music I would probably invite people guitar players I don't want it to be too loud I want it so people can sit and talk so guitar players um, I probably have a subscription to, to, uh, to Sirius uh, XM so that um, uh, and it would I choose a channel that was consistent with my target audience and it might vary with the time of day I would make sure that the music ambiance was right cheap way again to create ambiance um, importantly staff one of the big problems is unreliable staff or staff who aren't really great with people I take my time to hire people who are good I would start with my friends and family um, and and get recommendations from them and treat them well so that they have a good time they're working hard but not too hard they get appropriate praise maybe profit sharing just creating a good vibe for them treating them as the important people that they are that's critical I would definitely do that um, I'd probably have some artwork inexpensive artwork that would be on the walls and I'd act in a way like an art gallery because it's using space that, that otherwise doesn't yield any money and by having art up there that's for sale I'm attract I'm, a, I'm decorating the walls while at the same time getting a commission for for the sales just the way an art gallery would sourcing I don't want to make things too complicated so maybe in the beginning until I got more established and saw what I needed to buy more of and less of I might just start at Costco and buy my coffee that perfectly wonderful coffee and flour and whatever else I needed I tried to get as much as I could from Costco the stuff that was not perishable um, and then reassess so I would be very careful to be monitoring what's selling what's not and adjusting my menu appropriately um, I want to talk about marketing a little bit name is very important creates the right feeling there are two that just pop to mind for me 
uh, but it would depend on the kind of where you're located, what you're trying to, I mean, there's a place, there's a little bar near where I live called The Graduates near UC Berkeley, and that was an old movie, and it really attracted people. But I, a couple of names that come to mind that are memorable and make the, create the right impression, I believe, would be Cafe Comfy, or Coffee, Tea, and Me, if you wanted to be a little playful, maybe I have a little singles vibe in there, um, something like that. Signage, I'd want to make sure the sign is large but attractive, uh, maybe with a fun logo. If it's comfy, I might have somebody sitting on a sofa or two people or three people sitting on a sofa smiling, a uh, very comfy, cushy sofa, something like that. Um, I would um, I would have, if I advertise, I wouldn't do coupons. That's attracting cheap gates. That's not what I'm trying to do. And I'm not going to price to be the cheapest. I don't want to be, you know, over the market but I want to be closer to the top of the general market in the area. So here in the San Francisco Bay Area, I might, for example, charge 3 or $4 for a little pastry, like a morning bun or a cinnamon roll or whatever. And, you know, maybe two, three bucks, three bucks for a cup of coffee these days. It's crazy, but it's what it is. And $5, say, for a latte, somewhere in there. Plenty of profit margin, not cheap, but not over the market. Um, and then the, um, I think that's all. And the, really, I do want to say I want to be really very careful to monitor in the beginning what's working, what is not, and be open to changing. I'd be certainly checking the Yelp reviews, the Google reviews. I'd be talking to customers. Even if I wasn't planning to stay and be very actively involved in the cafe for long, those first few months, I am an evaluator. I am trying to make the get off to a great start. Um, and then I might either, you know, get exit and move on to my next project, hire a, um, hire a manager um, to, to run it, checking in on him or her regularly and also giving due praise, paying fairly. Um, and then I would have this exit strategy. If it's doing poorly, Despite my efforts to improve it, I'd cut my losses and get out. If it's doing really well, I would not be greedy. If it was making enough money for my family and for myself, you know, which to live a nice upper middle class lifestyle, that's enough. I would not open a second location. If I did want to, um, uh, I might sell out and have somebody else buy it and use the profit for some other cool new venture. Or I might start a second location but I won't let the quality go and I won't let the whole business eat me up. So I would equal, equal patience, start that second location. So those that may be the world's shortest course in starting a business, there are some generalizable principles in that. I am looking at successful businesses to, to copy the ideas. It's an even better way than talking to the customer because I'm seeing it all in action. I am reading up a lot up front so that I'm not wasting money on consultants prematurely. I'm not just starting. I'm reading carefully, free stuff off of Google and ChatGPT. And then I'll hire a consultant for an hour or a day to, to give me localized, customized advice. I'm very, very careful about location, not just high foot traffic if, if, if I'm looking for that kind of a location, but also, you know, what are the government regulations in the area? Um, is it where I want near where I want to live? Um, and uh, I I don't want to take a location that has been bad. For a pre, there's a red in a pretty good location. Well, it seems to be a pretty good location near where I live, but every year or two the restaurant there goes out of business. No good. I can't do that. It's got to be something that clearly is a good location. I want to again look, critical, if possible, not to have to buy equipment new see if I can find a business where I can buy a business where they're motivated to sell and therefore I can get the equipment right there in place cheap. Um, I'm going to, when rehab, I'm not going to fight and spend a fortune on rehabbing. I'm going to figure out low cost ways, whether it be paint or artificial plants or uh, art on the walls uh, and using my friend to do some of that, myself and my friends to do the painting or whatever to keep my costs down. Use furniture that's in, that looks nice and appropriate for the for the environment. Deciding on what my role is, 
Um, I'm going to hire with great care, usually using people I know so that I, I am more likely to not have that huge turnover and employee theft, which is a, a real problem. Um, I'm going to have events, you know, whether it be, uh, you know, that again, don't cost much, whether it be music or, you know, I was in Switzerland once and there was a cafe and they had a speaker every hour and you could just sign up on a, on a blackboard. I want to talk, you know, about, uh, about roses next hour, or I want to talk about uh, uh, Ukraine the next hour. And that was a free way to get people there and to stay there. So think about low cost events. Marketing, name matters a lot. It's a cheap way to get marketing, good name. Do your, if you're gonna advertise, do it ultra locally. Don't have to pay for very broad dissemination unless you know it's an online business, you're trying to go national. But I'm a big, I'm very nervous about spending a lot on advertising. And then critically monitoring what is and isn't working. Put the time in upfront in those first few months and you will reap the rewards. And then don't fall in love with some, with a, a failing idea. If you, despite your efforts to improve, it's not working well, get out. If it's working well, decide whether you want to, uh, whether enough is enough. You only want one location is enough, or do you need to open a second location, sell whatever, you know, hire a manager to run your current business, run it or something else. Anyway, those are some thoughts about how to start a business that, of course, apply to a cafe, but I think apply more broadly. In any event, I do uh, like to uh, encourage you to. Uh, um, Give a thumbs up if you like this, thumbs down if you don't. Uh, be honest, that's fine. Um, I will certainly welcome your sharing on social media. Um, and uh, love it if you subscribe to this, if it's you know, uh, if you're listening to us on a podcast, subscribing to that, or to, if you're watching it on YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I like to end everything, every one of these podcasts with my very favorite slogan, which I do believe is more applicable now than maybe ever in my lifetime. We find comfort among those who agree with us, growth among those who don't. I'm Marty Nemco.